For me personally, the most interesting news in Tesla's third quarter results was this. It wasn't the revenue, the profit. We all knew those were what they were approximately going to be, and Tesla was pretty well in that ballpark. However, the battery news is what really got me excited. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking, the 4680 battery cell. Tesla has received a lot of criticism from different YouTube experts or from different so-called um, you know, commenting experts. You see a lot of people saying it was the wrong decision. It was a bad call from Elon Musk. Now, I'm not really sure either way if that's true or not, but it is interesting to see General Motors, BMW, and other automakers now decide to use 4680 size cylindrical cells. Why are they doing that if it's not a good decision, especially after the fact? I mean, they've made those decisions within the last six months. Either way, what I took away from what Tesla said about its 4680 cells was quite interesting. That is, Tesla is essentially changing what they're doing with 4680 cell production. Now, previously you could buy the cheapest Tesla Model Y. It was all wheel drive, standard range version. It used 4680 cells. It had 279 miles of range. That was made at the factory in Texas. Now you cannot buy that vehicle anymore because they're using all 4680 cell production for the new Cybertruck or the Cybertruck. But Cybertruck needs, of course, as much energy density as it can possibly get. It's a massive vehicle, it's heavy. It needs higher energy density batteries than what were in the Tesla Model Y standard range, which, I mean, I think it's good that Tesla canceled that car and went to using LFP cells and providing a vehicle that's really rear-wheel drive, right? LFP, 43,990 US dollars, so it's $4,000 cheaper. And realistically, for that standard range vehicle, people don't need to have all-wheel drive. If you wanna get all-wheel drive, get the long range version. Anyhow, the 4680 cells that Tesla were producing for the Model Y had a lower energy density than the batteries that they're producing for the Cybertruck. In fact, the difference is approximately 10%, which doesn't sound like much, but the return on a 10% energy density improvement is more than it sounds like. And the reason for that is you're not adding weight. Once you start adding weight to the car, the when you get energy density improvements, you add weight to the car by, you know, for example, if you just increase the size of the battery pack, you often think, hang on a minute, that battery pack's a lot bigger. Why is the range not exponentially, not? why does the range not grow in conjunction with the growth in battery pack size? And that's because of the weight increase. So what I took away from what Tesla said was this. Now, first of all, they're making a higher margin on their energy business than they are on cars, though Tesla did predict that would happen. And now they're changing all 4680 battery cell production to being only the higher energy density version of 4680 cells. They said they have four production lines and all of them now are being upgraded or changed in order to only produce the higher energy density 4680 cells. So it appears to me as though Tesla must have solved its challenges. What are those challenges? Well, we all know there's been some challenges with the dry electrode coating process. Tesla bought Maxwell, uh, Maxwell supercapacitor company, but the only reason they bought them for, I think it was 300 and something million dollars, was to get their dry electrode coating process and use it in their battery cells. What that means is they don't have to apply a wet slurry and then cool it and then cook it in the ovens. And it was gonna take up a lot of time if they continued to go down that route. It's basically a more cost effective version way to produce cylindrical battery cells. Unfortunately for General Motors and Ford, SK Innovations or GM's battery partner, which is called LG Chem or LG Energy Solutions, neither of them use this process. So it's actually more expensive for them to produce their batteries versus what it is for Tesla to produce a 4680 cylindrical cell. Now Tesla have said that they have the production capacity, right? To produce 125,000 Cybertrucks per year based on their existing production lines. They don't have the ability to do this as in uh, the parts and the processes, but they have the actual production capacity once those lines are running at full speed to make 125,000 Cybertrucks per year, which would mean, you would think, they therefore have the capacity to produce a very, very large number of 4680 battery cells with this 10% higher energy density. That's big. I mean, 
Tesla ramping up battery production, in my opinion, was probably the most important part of their EV business in North America. 4680 cells, there's been a lot of money invested into them. And a lot of people think it's been a bit of a waste and a bit of a failure. But if Tesla is in fact capable of producing enough batteries for 125,000 Cybertrucks with a 10% higher energy density battery, then I don't believe it was a failure. In fact, I think it was actually a success. So Tesla battery cell production will eventually be split into two phases at the Gigafactory in Texas one dedicated to cyber truck cells. In the fourth quarter, Tesla said they will focus on converting Giga Texas battery production line to concentrating only on cyber truck cells, which is what they're doing right now. Cyber truck cell production will be the main focus of Giga Texas's battery assembly line for the next three quarters, up until Q, the end of Q2 2024, so up until the middle of next year. Tesla Cybertruck deliveries will begin on the 30th of November, 2023. And the company is still in the pilot production stage for the Cybertruck, so they're producing relatively small numbers daily. Tesla's CEO, Elon Musk, said it will take a bit of time before Cybertruck production hits full speed, as in their 125,000 unit production run rate. And the other thing he mentioned is that it won't make a profit. So he says it's gonna take a while before it makes a profit. Now, what I think this means is that Tesla probably won't make a profit on them until they're actually producing large numbers, economies of scale. A lot of CEOs in China say you need to produce 500,000 vehicles to make a profit. Does Tesla need to produce 500,000 vehicles of the Cybertruck per year to make a profit? No, 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 it's not what they're saying. But they're saying of one particular model, you need to be making about 100,000 per year. But... With the Cybertruck, it's a completely new kind of vehicle. It uses stainless steel and all these other production methods, which Tesla haven't really quite mastered in terms of streamlining them, making them more cost affordable. They need to come up with some essentially new technologies and new ways of doing things in order to make Cybertruck profitable at a price that Tesla say people will be willing to pay or can afford. A lot of people are excited about Cybertruck. I am too, said Musk. I've driven the car. It's an amazing product. I do want to emphasize that there will be enormous challenges in reaching volume production with the Cybertruck and then in making a Cybertruck cash flow positive.